So the other day, while looking at a Medium-inspired text selection directive in Angular, uh, it occurred to me that my mental model for ng-zone or Angular zone or the instance of zone.js that runs in the main uh, Angular context um, was a little bit incomplete. I wasn't feeling 100% confident in uh, thinking through how bindings within bindings within bindings would work. So uh, I guess by default, right, if we have things within a view, like a click handler here within a view, when these callbacks get invoked, they get invoked inside the main Angular zone, which means that they'll trigger a change detection lifecycle. But we can choose to bind methods outside of the Angular zone so that they can bypass Angular's change detection lifecycle, and then we can re-enter the Angular zone as needed. This is particularly helpful when we're, say, setting up custom uh, event handler plugins for the Angular platform. But to sanity check this, what I did was I created a simple app component here that sets up a couple of bindings. Um, first, I create an, an ND do check lifecycle method, and this will get called anytime Angular's change detection lifecycle runs in the context of the app component. So this will give us some insight into how often change detection is running and whether or not our interactions actually trigger change detection. Then inside of my ng init, which gets called after the input bindings get bound for the first time, I'm calling this setup mouse down. And what we're gonna do is explicitly bind a mouse down handler to the app component, but we're gonna do this binding in the run outside Angular method of the Angular zone. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna set up this event binding outside of the Angular zone, which means that when this event gets triggered, it's not going to trigger change detection. And that I'm very confident of. What I wasn't confident of is that inside that mouse down handler, what happens when I add another event binding? Does this event binding take place inside the same zone that the mouse down event handler is bound in? Or does this revert back to the Angular zone? And would I have to do another run outside of Angular method call to set up this binding? And then inside this mouse up binding, you'll see that I'm further setting up a set timeout call, which is also uh, related to the zones and can trigger change detection. So in this case, I have a handler that's set up outside of the Angular zone, which in turn sets up another handler, which in turn sets up a set timeout. So as these things trigger, we'll check to see whether or not the uh, ND do check method gets called, which will indicate whether or not we actually trigger change detection. So let's go ahead and jump over to the browser here and refresh. So when we refresh, we can see the ND do check because everything's getting bound for the first time and getting rendered and we're doing some change detection. Now, as I click around, what you can see is that I'm triggering my mouse down, my mouse up, and my set timeout callback. But what you also see is that there is no subsequent ND do check. So not only is the mouse down event handler bound outside of the Angular zone, which when we jump back here, we know that that's gonna happen because it was done with the run outside Angular. But what we can also see is the subsequent mouse up and set timeout handlers are also bound outside of the Angular zone because they're bound in the same zone that the mouse down handler was bound in. Now, if I click into something in the view that triggers a uh, view callback, so remove mouse down, you can see this time we do trigger a change detection because again, it's being called from within the view and anything that's triggered within the view is going to trigger change detection because we could have potentially changed the view state model. Um, and now if I re-add the mouse down, of course we get the do check because of the view, but now as I click around again, you'll see that we get no, uh, no symptom of change detection. These are all running, these are all bound and run outside of the Angular zone. So again, just a sanity check, this is the way it's supposed to work. Uh, I just felt like my mental model needed some polish, and now I have a better understanding and more confidence in how uh, the zones interact and how bindings interact with the Angular zone and trigger change detection. Um, another nice thing to notice here is that removing the mouse down, of course, removes all the bindings, but one thing to keep in mind is that the remove mouse down method gets called inside the Angular zone but I'm able to remove the mouse down handler, which was bound outside of the Angular zone. So you can remove event bindings across zones 
uh, without triggering, or I guess it doesn't matter if we're triggering change detection because change detection is already being triggered here. Um, but I, just the point is I don't have to necessarily call remove event listener inside the same zone with which the event handler was bound. The, the zones just um, refer to change detection. They don't refer to actual physical bindings. So I can still remove the physical binding even if uh, the binding is, is for a callback that was bound in a different zone. So again, just a sanity check. Nothing here is groundbreaking. This is mostly a note to self so that I could have a better mental model of how the zones work and how bindings interact with Angular's change detection lifecycle.